In this video, I'm gonna show you the tactics I use to grow a client's traffic by 94%. But here's the kicker. I'm willing to bet that at least three of these tactics are not currently in your SEO strategy. Let's fix that. I'm gonna break down these strategies step by step so you can replicate them for your own website. My name is Matt Diggity and I'm a director at The Search Initiative, an international SEO agency that focuses on cutting edge SEO. And I'm about to spill the beans on some of our best tactics. Let me introduce you to the case study. The client is a real estate business focused on the Southeast Asian market, condos, flats, houses, all of it. When they came on board with the search initiative, they were in pretty good shape. They were getting 200,000 visits per month, which is pretty damn good for their territory. But like most ambitious businesses, they wanted to grow. And there were some major SEO issues that were holding them back. For one, they were getting freaking negative SEO'd with toxic backlinks by some shady competition. They also had a ton of content on their site, but they were struggling to rank on page one for their most important keywords. Next, they had a desperate need to build backlinks, but within a budget that made sense to their business. And lastly, they had two technical SEO issues that were severely weighing down their progress. I'm about to show you step-by-step step how we solve these issues and improve their traffic by 94%. But real quick, before we get started, I left a link in the pinned comment to my free SEO training masterclass. It goes over everything I'm doing today to get sites to the top of Google. Just click the link in the pinned comment to book your spot. Now back to the video. As mentioned before, the client was getting spammed with negative SEO. What this means is that a competitor was using unscrupulous methods to build toxic backlinks to their site with the intention of triggering a Google penalty, also known as scumbag SEO. Some people think that you don't need to worry about negative SEO. Here's my take on it. Google has said before that they're able to devalue or ignore most spammy links. The keyword here is most. That's the same as saying that they cannot ignore all spammy links. If you got 1,000 spammy links, how many of them weren't ignored? 50? 100? Are you actually cool with that? Furthermore, in this conversation with search liaison Gary Ilias, he's asked if there's a need to disavow links anymore. And Gary said, there's less need. But if you're getting spammed and don't disavow, then you're increasing the chances that the manual actions team takes a look at your site. And trust me, no one wants that. The Google Disavow tool is a way to manually tell Google to ignore spammy links to your site. If you're getting spammed or you personally built crappy links in the past, you should use it ASAP. Let's take a look at how to identify a negative SEO attack on Ahrefs. Type your domain into Site Explorer. Scroll down to the referring domains graph. If you see a sharp spike in referring domains like this, and you know you didn't build these 4,000 links, then you just got negative SEO. Sometimes the backlink spam is more subtle as with this example here. Pro tip, you can set up alerts on Ahrefs to automatically notify you when there's a spike of new referring domains to your site. Now you need to separate the good backlinks from the spammy backlinks that you want to disavow. Here's what to look out for starting with Blogspot domains. Blogspot domains are super cheap and easy to build, which is why dbags often exploit them to build spammy links to your site. In the Ahrefs backlink report, click on more filters, select domain name, type in Blogspot, then click apply. This poor site had 66 crappy Blogspot domain links created when it got negative SEO'd. Now we have web directories. Since these links can be built for free, they also get exploited. You can find these by using the same method as before but typing directory into the filter. Next we have good old comment and forum spam. With these, people will send target anchor text to try to over-optimize you and trigger a penalty. This is an example of a forum spam link taken directly from Google's guide on link schemes. To find these, go to the Ahrefs anchors report. If you see something like this where there's nearly 2,000 links all with the anchor text men's rings online, it's likely comment spam. Click on view full report to dig deeper. From here, you can dig into the referring domains that have created these links. That said, if you wanna look at these sites, open at your own risk. They're spammy AFs, so there's a non-zero chance that you will end up with the virus. Another pattern to look out for is a bunch of links coming from domains with the same IP address. That can mean they're all hosted in the same place and controlled by the same douche. You can find this in Ahrefs referring IPs report. If you click on this top IP address and dig in, you'll find it's our old friend Blogspot spamming like it's no one's business. So you've identified all the garbage links going to your site, what's next? It's time to create your disavow file. As mentioned before, a disavow file is a way to tell Google, yo, pretend this link doesn't exist. Some people think that uploading a disavow file somehow puts you on a watch list. That's just another SEO myth. Google understands that websites will get poor backlinks whether you built them or not. You're not gonna get blacklisted for using a tool that helps them make the internet better. To create a disavow file, open up a simple .txt document. If you wanna disavow one page at a time, you simply write the URL 
disavows one by one. But 99% of the time, you want to disavow all links coming from a particular domain. So you add domain colon before the URL. Once you've created the disavow file, you submit it here at the disavow links tool. It takes a few weeks for it to kick in and see the benefits. The next strategy I'm gonna teach you is how to get quick traffic by optimizing your existing content for low hanging fruit keywords. A low hanging fruit is a keyword which you're already ranking just outside of page one for. Google likes your content, just not enough. With the optimizations I'm about to show you, you'll be able to break into page one where the traffic is. Step one is to find out all your low hanging fruit opportunities. Open up Ahrefs Site Explorer, type in your domain and set the country targeting, then open up organic keywords. This is gonna give you a list of all the keywords you're ranking for. Next, you wanna set a filter to only show keywords you're ranking 11 to 24. Then you wanna set a maximum keyword difficulty to 25. We're shooting for the easy stuff. And bam, here's your list of low hanging keywords. In this example, you can see three of them belong to the same page. So if you optimize this page, you're gonna get more traffic. To optimize your content, I highly recommend using a tool like Surfer. Surfer uses algorithms to look at the content of the top articles ranking for your keyword and extracts out exactly what they did right. It then guides you on how to optimize your own content to get it to the top of Google. Open up Surfer's content editor, type in your keywords, and import content from URL to load the article you want to optimize. The tool has now analyzed your content and compared it to the top ranking articles. On the left is where you optimize your content, and on the right is what you need to do. A content score of 46 means there's room for improvement. For example, this article wrote way too much content. Most people on page one only had 600 words. Down here's where the tool suggests how frequent you should write the critical phrases in your content. Considering that this article didn't use the phrase Floris and Watford once in their content, but all their competitors did multiple times, it's no wonder they're not doing well. Outside of Surfer, optimize the title tag and the H1 of your article two absolutely critical optimization spots. Your title tag is what shows up in the search results. What I don't like about this title is that they double counted the word flower, which is over optimization, and they forgot the word florist. Plus there's really nothing enticing you to click it. So instead I'd change it to Watford flower delivery and florist, free delivery. Your H1 is what you see at the top of your article. Again, this example isn't very optimized, so I'd go with this instead. Now that you've optimized your content, use Google Search Console's URL submit tool to get Google to revisit your content and award you with higher rankings. Next, I wanna get into strategic link building. Most people don't have unlimited budgets to spend on links. So you need to ask yourself which pages are the best to build links to and what is the most effective anchor text you can use. As you know, backlinks remain one of the top ranking factors in Google, so it's important to get them right. Let's start with how to pick which articles to send the links to. The easy answer is those low hanging fruit pages you just optimized. But aside from that, you should also send links to pages that recently lost rankings and traffic. Google used to love these articles a minute ago, so let's make Google love them again. Open Ahrefs Site Explorer's top pages report and select decline for both traffic and keywords. Then set a filter for the previous three months. Behold, here's a bunch of pages that just lost their mojo. Since Valentine's Day is around the corner, this article is a good candidate to give a boost to. Right now it's ranked number 14, which is cute because that's what Valentine's Day falls on, but that's not good enough for us. Now when you build links, you need to know what's the best anchor text to use. Anchor text is the clickable part of the link that takes people to the destination. That text helps Google understand the topic of the destination, so if you write it cleverly, it's a huge ranking factor. In the Ahrefs SERP overview report for Valentine's Day flowers, you can see who's ranking in the top position. They build a bunch of backlinks for sure, but if you choose your anchors correctly, you can get there with less links. Put each of these competitor URLs into Ahrefs anchor report, then export these out to CSV. Then you wanna categorize each of them into the following categories of anchor text. Targeted, these are keyword rich anchor texts like Valentine's Day flowers. Topical, these these are anchors related to your topic, such as get your loved one a gift. Branded, anchors that include your brand name, like Prestige Flowers. URL, anchors that are listed as URLs, like prestigeflowers.com. Miscellaneous, like click here. And NA, any other anchors such as ones with no text. When you're done, your sheet will look like this, which you can convert into a pie chart that looks like this. Rinse and repeat for the rest of the top ranking articles and you get an average that you need to hit for the perfect anchor text optimization for this keyword. If you want a full video breakdown of this process, I left a link to a video in the description. So check it out after you finish here. Next, we get into some technical SEO strategies. I love fixing technical SEO issues because they're quick and they give huge results when fixed. The first technical SEO issue that the client faced was with internal 301 redirects. If you've ever had to change the URL of an article, you've created a 301 redirect. It's the way you tell Google that content has moved from URL A to URL B. A 301 is super handy because it also passes all the page rank, backlink love, link juice, whatever you want to call it, from URL A to URL B. 
And it's 100% efficient according to Gary from Google. But one crucial thing that people forget when they implement 301s is to update the internal links going to URL A over to URL B. What's the big issue with that? 301 redirects add an extra step in the process of loading the desired page because the server first tries to load the old page, sees the 301 redirect, and then tries to load the new URL, essentially creating a redirect chain. This means that it takes more time to load the content for the user, which is a bad signal to Google. Also, if you have a bunch of these, you've put unnecessary stress on the Google bot's ability to crawl your website. And guess what? Google doesn't like that. So the solution is easy. You need to fix these redirect chains. But how do you find them in the first place? I'll show you how to do this with Screaming Frog, which is free for small websites under 500 pages. Type the home page of your domain into the tool, then press start. Under bulk export, select all links. Now open up the exported sheet and filter out everything but 301 from the status code column. For the destination column, select text filter, then contains, and then type your domain name here. Then voila, here's your list of redirect chains that need to fix it. The next technical SEO item isn't so much an issue, but it's actually a weakness if you don't have it on your site, and that's breadcrumbs. In fact, I recently ran some single variable tests to show that breadcrumbs indeed improve traffic, resulting in a 36.96 increase in clicks compared to a control group. Breadcrumb navigation, or breadcrumbs for short, is a set of links that indicate where a user is located on a website. There's a few benefits of using breadcrumbs. First off, it prevents your users from getting lost on a site, which results in a better user experience. It lowers bounce rate because it provides users another option of what to do next when they're on your site, as opposed to leaving it. There's also some significant SEO benefits, like improved crawlability, breadcrumb links that help Google understand your site hierarchy, improved relevance. Most of the time, Google uses your sitemap to index pages, but the sitemap doesn't provide any information on how your pages are relevant to each other. Lastly, breadcrumbs also improve your presence in the search search result as you can see here. Adding breadcrumbs to your site is super easy. If you're on WordPress, you can use plugins like Yoast SEO or Breadcrumb Nav XD. WooCommerce sites can use this WooCommerce breadcrumbs plugin. Here's some best practices. Keep the paths short and simple. For example, home, men's, shoes, sandals is way easier than home, sale, men's sale, men's shoes, men's sandals. Also, size the font of the breadcrumbs well. They should be visible but not cluttering up the page. And lastly, you can use schema markup to force the Google search result to show your breadcrumbs. In Google Search Central, there's documentation on how to set this up. So after all this effort, what was the result? 90% increase in users, 85% increase in new users, and 94% increase in traffic. If you'd like us to do this to your site, head on over to thesearchinitiative.com, scroll down to the bottom to use a contact form, and reach out. We'll take a look at your site and let you know what we can do for you.